We have now entered the Common Ground Exhibition. The exhibition is located in the Dr. Toshio and Chizuko Inahara Gallery. The exhibition itself was designed by Japanese American National Museum staff, including myself. I was the lead designer working in, in conjunction with Ulysses Diaz from Adobe LA. Adobe LA stands for Artists and Architects and Designers on the Border Edge of Los Angeles. And it's a Latino cooperative of many different people dedicated to sharing the perspectives of Latino culture. We are currently here in the Heart Mountain Barracks. The exhibition begins with this because we felt it was a perfect example of how the community works together and how the museum works with volunteers. So this project um, sent a group of volunteers to Hard Mountain with staff and a historic architect, Jim McElwain. And together, they were able to figure out how to dismantle the barracks and bring it down here to Los Angeles. And this was back in the early 90s as part of the exhibition, America's Concentration Camps. As part of the journey that this barracks has been on from Wyoming, came to Los Angeles, and then it went to Ellis Island. And after Ellis Island, it came back to Los Angeles for the opening of this building. So in 1999, it was reinstalled here in its current location. Um, if you look to my right, you will see photographs from Stan Honda. Stan Honda was a photographer that went on this journey to Hard Mountain to document the process of volunteers taking down the barracks. And, and he worked with Sharon Yamato in writing the book, Moving Walls. We are now in the next room of the exhibition. And this is where we tell the story of Japanese immigration to territories of the United States, including Hawaii, which you will see over my left shoulder. That's, that tells the story of plantation life and how Japanese worked in the plantations of Hawaii. And then behind you are these steamer trunks taken from um, different people who came to America. That's an artwork installation created by Hirokazu Kosaka, who is a friend of the Japanese American National Museum. He also works at the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, located about two blocks from here. He is a very well-known artist in Los Angeles. And we wanted to include this piece in the exhibition because it really talks about the struggles, the, the monumental task of becoming an American, coming to America. Um, we also mentioned the stories of Eko and Manjiro, who were some of the first people to come, or first people to leave Japan and explore the world. This is before 1885. If you can look down behind you, you'll notice that the display case is a little bit slanted. Our, our floors have straight lines. But if you look at the case itself, it's tilted about five degrees towards me. And that's another element of the design. If you ever look at a map of Los Angeles, you'll notice that the Civic Center is not square with the Jeffersonian grid. It's actually shifted. And that's because the original city of Los Angeles was founded by um, Father Junipero Serra. And it was, they built a mission there. And when they built the mission, there was no Jeffersonian grid. There was just people and, and the Tongva and the people that lived here originally. And so when they built the city, they just built the city. But as the grid comes over, that city didn't change. So if you look at a map, you'll see that slant. And this case that's slanted in that same angle is meant to be um, illustration of how, again, this exhibition is not just for Japanese Americans, but for the whole city of Los Angeles. Now we are in the pre-war years. And this part of the exhibition really talks about how Issei, the first generation Japanese Americans, um, established themselves in, the, in, in America. And so what you see here are a, a lot of different ways um, that Japanese communities were formed, whether they're being doctors or going to school or starting stores, working in canneries, farming. Um, we try to touch on everything. Behind me, we talk about community, we talk about Japanese schools, we talk about sports and scouting. Um, and then over my left shoulder, we talk about the, the Nisei and how the Nisei began um, their lives really being American because they knew nothing else but America. 
This is the transition from the pre-war years. If you look behind you, you'll see a photograph taken by Jackie Wata of Japanese Americans assembling and leaving for camp. Through our research, we were able to find that this was actually that first wave when people volunteered. A lot of these people were going to be going to um, Manzanar to help build the camps. And so if you go to our website, you'll see in our collections page that there is a huge collection of Jackie Wata, who was working for the WRA to document the experiences. They're rare photographs because at that time, um, photographs, cameras were contraband for Japanese Americans. And so for him to be able to carry that camera along with him and capture these images of the building of camp were very important. We are now in the Ray and Susie Miyamoto Gallery. And behind you, you'll see a montage of photos of exclusion, Japanese Americans being forced to leave their homes. The exhibition talks about the Justice Department camps, family separation, the building of camps by volunteers. Here's a map that shows the travel that people had to go through, how, how people were sent, the process of incarceration. Here are more pictures of camp, including some propaganda on the very bottom, showing how people were given these images to show them how camp was okay. Behind me are, again, more photographs of camp and life in camp. Here we talk about Hawaii and the Triple V, people leaving for camp establishment of the 100th. It's a famous Iolani Palace photograph when they asked for volunteers. Right now we're in the center of the war room years. If you look down behind you, you will see a work by Christine Yuki Aono. She is a visual artist and what she did was she visited every camp and she took dirt from the camps and then she workshopped with different people to um, secure artifacts from each camp. And what she did was make an installation of this called Relics from Camp. And so if you look in each box, you'll see artifacts um, sitting upon the dirt from the actual camp itself. As you know, this is a museum, and so museums have very strict rules about how they allow works to be, um, or what kind of materials can be put into galleries. And dirt is a very, challenging element. So when we did this exhibition, what we had to do is we had to take the dirt from the camps that Christine had collected. We had to put them into an oven and bake them at a very high temperature. And we had to do that about three times for each set of soil until we were comfortable allowing it to be part of um, an installation inside a museum. Continuing through the war years, we tell many stories of the incarceration experience, but I will just highlight a few of them. Starting with the voices that challenged. Here we talk about the stories of Mitsue Endo, Gordon Hidabayashi, Fred Korematsu, and Min Yasui. We also talk about voices of resistance with um, Frank Gemi and the Heart Mountain Resistors. We also talk a little bit about Thule Lake and the segregation camp there. This is a very complex story. Um, oftentimes it's, it's reduced to the no-no boys, but it's not, it's much more. And I would recommend that people go to the Thule Lake Committee website and see their resources and look at the vast histories of people who were incarcerated at Thule Lake. It was really one of those situations that was a very unfortunate one. They even had a jail within a jail they created this high security camp. Many families felt very, um, it was a very um, difficult time for many families at that camp. So again, I would de definitely go to the Thule Lake Committee's website. And then we talk about the voices of friendship. Miss Breed, Ralph Lazo, Wayne Collins was attorney for the, end of, um, the ACLU, and John Burns, the, the governor of Hawaii. Inside of the war room years, we start to talk about the veterans' story. 
In the, in the beginning, we mentioned the 100th and the volunteers that that's began to form the 100th that went over to Europe. As their numbers began to dwindle because of the casuals that they had received, they began to go to the camps to see if there were volunteers from America's concentration camps. And so we do show that there were people that came from the camps and actually served alongside the Hawaii boys. Um, we talk about their triumphs and victories in Europe. We also talk about the Lost Battalion and the Gothic Line and other battles that they had. If you look at the photo walls, you'll see in the back that there are these black ribbed cages. That's something that we also um, were referencing. Those are actually camp maps um, from Roar. And so it's a very abstract version of it. But we wanted to use those maps as um, ways to hang the graphics on the wall. So if you look all around me, you'll notice that these maps are everywhere inside the war room years. We are now in the resettlement years. Here we talk about how individuals resettled after the war, sometimes before the war even ended. A lot of the younger people or people who were able to find jobs back east would often resettle in places like Chicago, Seabrook, New Jersey, New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta. Um, and so we tell a lot of those stories here. We talk about the democratic revolution, how a lot of Japanese Americans now felt it imperative that they participate in democracy so that they can shape the future. Um, and the artwork inside this gallery that um, we're going to be looking at is the Manzanar models created by Bob Hasarika. I don't know if Bob Hasarika would call this an artwork, but we treat it as an artwork because it's so beautifully made. Bob Hasarika was an engineer that worked for Mattel Corporation, and he actually designed a lot of their toys. But he was also born in camp, and this was something that, a story that he wanted to ensure was told to future generations. I think his story is important because if you ever met Bob, he was a very timid and quiet person, even though he was a Green Beret. But this was his way of telling and sharing the story by building these meticulous models. And in sharing these, he was able to bring about the conversation of camp experience to all people. And so those are some of the elements that we use to design the exhibition Common Ground. I hope that if you're in LA anytime soon, please stop by and visit and learn more about the Japanese American experience.